Good morning. Good morning. And welcome, especially to our guests and visitors today. This is the last Sunday after the Epiphany. We celebrate and remember the transfiguration of our Lord when Jesus went up on the mountain with his three closest disciples and was changed before them and was by that event revealing himself as the Son of God and encouraging and reminding and hearing the voice of God to for his followers to pay attention and listen carefully to him. The order of service we follow this morning is Divine Service Setting 1. It is printed in its entirety in our bulletins this morning, along with the uh, hymns. And uh, one announcement that uh, I mentioned, we've been praying for uh, Jeff Saronin, who had underwent uh, cancer surgery on his intestine, Friday, that surgery went great, he said, and he's feeling like he's on the mend again. Uh, I think he's hospitalized yet as he's recovering from that surgery, but doing well, and so we will continue to pray for his health and strength uh, this day and our going. The opening hymn this morning is 415, Jesus on the Mountain Peak. We prepare our hearts for worship and then rise as we sing that hymn.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unbelieving. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We rise and join in singing the intro song.
God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory, and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the transfiguration of our Lord is from Exodus chapter 34. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining, and Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in singing the psalm for this day, which is Psalm 2, responsibly by Hovers.
The epistle reading is from 2 Peter, chapter 1, where Peter writes, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise to the hallelujah.
Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our meditation today is our Old Testament reading from Exodus 34. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out, he told the people of Israel what he was commanded. The people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining. And Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear Christian friends, last week, of course, we were preached about Moses on the mountain, pleading with God to go up, to go with him and the people as they were getting ready to leave the mountain of Sinai. This Sunday, we have Moses on the mountain again. Actually, we have him on the mountain twice in the readings today. One in the Gospel reading, as he appeared with Jesus and the disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration, and again in the Old Testament reading. I mentioned, of course, that this is a Sunday when we are remembering that event in Jesus' life, the Transfiguration of our Lord. It is the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany, a season of the church in which we are focusing on seeing the glory of Jesus revealed. And the main point of this particular event, the Transfiguration, is about, all about, the manifesting or revealing the glory of Jesus, seeing who Jesus is, and how, where God's glory is found and shown to us in Jesus. Of course, there in the Gospel, we had three disciples of Jesus going with him when Jesus' own face was shining like the sun, his clothes were white and as light. And of course, they heard that voice that came from heaven, from God the Father. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So we are reminded that Jesus is God's Son. Of course, that's what we've been remembering and focusing on since Christmas, really, even before Christmas. Christmas and its season also revealed who Jesus is. The angel messengers proclaiming Jesus's conception and birth. And in the Epiphany season, we've continued that theme. We've seen the Magi coming to worship him. We saw the, the baptism of Jesus. And again, God the Father speaking over him. And today, Jesus is transfigured before the disciples, shining with God's glory that belonged to him as the Son of God. Well, in our Old Testament reading today, going back to that, we see this strange happening Somewhat similar, but different, of course, uh, at the time of Moses. First, a little background. When is this in the time history of Moses and the people of Israel? Well, Moses had led the people of Israel out of Egypt. He had been empowered by God's mighty hand to administer the plagues upon Egypt. And then, of course, being pursued by the Egyptian army, the Lord led them and through the Red Sea, saving them through the water and destroying the Egyptians. From there, God led the people of Israel by Moses and that pillar of cloud and fire to Mount Sinai, where the Lord had first appeared to Moses in the burning bush. There, Moses went up on Mount Sinai, and the Lord established his covenant with the people. He gave them his law and his commandments, his law and his promises. And this wasn't just a single brief visit either. Moses initially went up on the mountain for 40 days and afterward, often up on the mountain, going up and hearing God's word, and then coming down and speaking with the people, telling them what God had said to him. But when Moses came down after talking with the Lord and hearing his word, there was this happening, this, this interesting thing happened. As a result of speaking with God, Moses' face shone. God's word 
which is elsewhere in Scripture called a light. We heard that in our epistle reading as well today. God's word is a light that shines uh, and gives us light to our path. That word entered into Moses and made him shine, which, of course, is rather strange. I mean, if you had experienced that at first, I suppose you would have been afraid as well. The people ran away from Moses. They didn't know what was going on. But Moses called them back, said everything was okay, and they came and heard God's word. Moses told the people what God had told him to speak to them. He related to them the commandments and laws of God. And then Moses put that veil over his face. And why the veil? What was the purpose of that? Well, in part, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 3 and 4, that veil was represented the people's limitations. It represented the sin that kept them from God, that kept them from hearing and understanding the fullness of what God would reveal to them, from hearing and knowing God's word. And Paul, in that second letter to the Corinthians, explains how there is still a veil of sin to this very day that keep, keeps us, keeps people from hearing what God wants to reveal to us, especially in Jesus Christ. I mean, you look around at the world today, and it is sad that so many people seem to have such a little knowledge of the basics of the Christian faith or of the scriptures. So many people not only don't know the Bible, but reject it. So many people misunderstand and slander what God says in his word. Even some who know what God says in his word reject it outright. Because God does reveal himself to us in his word and in his law. He revealed his will for us in a simple way in the Ten Commandments, which is really a summary of how God made us, who we are as, as human beings. He also wrote that in our hearts. I mean, if we pay attention to what we are conscious, we know what God wants us to do and not do. But the problem is that sin and rejection of God has corrupted, clouded, and blocked our understanding of that. It veils our minds to knowing what God wants. Satan, in so many ways, tempts us to reject God's word and his will. And in many ways, the society around us reinforces that. With messages like, do what you want. Follow your heart. Be your own God. You decide, what, decide what's right and wrong for you. Oh, we might, not, we might be willing to read Scripture, hear it, even learn from it and follow some of it, but not all of it, not everything. So many, so often people try to pick and choose what we follow if we attempt to follow it at all. But that is not what God wants from us. In fact, that's the veil of sin keeping us from hearing what God wants us to say. Again, in 2 Corinthians, as Paul goes on, he makes this application of Moses and his shining faith as he defended his own presentation of the truth, as he spoke about how he and his apostolic um, others, other apostles and leaders were presenting the truth of God. He said in, in chapter 4 of that letter, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our conscience is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of God, Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. See, it all comes back to Jesus Christ. Last week we heard how Moses uh, was, you know, how there he, he asked to see the face of God, and God wouldn't let him, because we can't see... Um, God's face in all its glory without being shown to us in Jesus. Last week, of course, we had Moses did see the glory of God as he was put in the rock, and God's glory, God announced his real glory. It was in the Lord, the Lord, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. 
Jesus came to be the revelation of God's glory that we could see because, and that would not be veiled with sin, because he came to take away sin. Jesus took our sin on himself and went to the cross. In fact, that was the very point of what Moses and Elijah were talking about with Jesus on that mountain of Jesus' transfiguration. They were discussing Jesus' work. His death and resurrection would take place in Jerusalem. The transfiguration of Jesus was a turning point in his ministry. Now he would be heading to Jerusalem deliberately and heading there with that purpose of accomplishing our salvation, going to the cross, taking our sin, and dealing with it in his own death and resurrection. At creation, God spoke, let light shine out of darkness. And Paul makes a point that God speaks his word also to us. And this is a thing about God's word. God's word is not just words. God's word is effective. God's word does and accomplishes what it says. When at the creation God said, let light out of, shine out of darkness, that happened. Light was there. And also this is for us as well. God speaks his word into the darkness of our hearts. God's word does it, and it accomplishes it. God's Holy Spirit, the Spirit who hovered over the face of the waters at creation, now comes to us. And when we hear the word of God, including that word, let light shine out of darkness, that happens. That Holy Spirit comes to us and gives us faith to trust in that word. Faith we need to know what God speaks to us in his word. Faith that takes away the veil of sin, that, that removes that misunderstanding and that, that clouding of God's will. Faith gives us the strength to hear God's word and to follow it and to obey and keep what God speaks to us. Faith empowers us to speak that same word of God, Christ to others and to speak it effectually. By hearing God's word, Moses' face shone with God's glory. When we hear God's word, God's word also comes into us and also causes us to shine with God's glory. Maybe not in that same physical way, but it is happening in each of us as we hear God's word. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record the word spoken by God the Father at the Transfiguration, and it is this. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Listen to him. Hear the words that God speaks through Jesus because the words of Christ are light that not only show us the way, but it goes into us and causes us also to have light. And that's what we need. This is a dark world that we are in. But when we have the light in us, we can have our way lightened as well as being a light to those who are around us. This world is indeed infected and stained by sin, but we know that it will come to an end. This is part of the promise of God. This world is not going on forever. It's not our ultimate home. But Jesus, by his word, shows us the path, the way through. The light of his word lights our path. We know that Jesus died for us, and then he rose for us and ascended into heaven. He went there to prepare a place for us, an eternal inheritance which is also part of what is revealed for us and for God's plan for us in Jesus' own transfiguration. He was changed to show us that we too will be changed. Moses led the people out of slavery in Egypt through the Red Sea, to the wilderness, and ultimately to the Promised Land. God's word also comes to us and gives us faith, freeing us from our slavery to sin because that's what sin really does, it enslaves us. Sin promises, but it doesn't deliver. It lies to us, just like Satan lies, and it's the father of lies. But God comes to us with his word, the light of his word, and he frees us from that. He baptizes us, he brings us through the water, through the wilderness of this world, and leads us through this world to that eternal inheritance earned by us, for us, by Jesus Christ. The words spoken by God at Jesus' transfiguration are a good reminder to us. Jesus is God's Son. God's beloved Son, and we can and should listen to him, pay attention to him, keep our eyes focused on him, because he is the one who shows us God. He reveals God to us. And it's not God in his anger over sin, the God who punishes and terrifies us and wants to make us stay away. No, in Jesus, we have revealed to us a God who loves us. 
a God who forgives us, a God who leads us to himself and is with us in every situation, and who promises his presence with us and helps us. And this is worth hearing and paying attention to. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God which passes all our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We continue by confessing our Christian faith, the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who moved for us and then for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you reveal your glory. In the transfiguration of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who tabernacled among us in the flesh, open our eyes of faith that we would see him continuing to tabernacle among us here in the divine service, and that we would heed your admonition to listen to him as he forgives and preserves us at font, pulpit, and altar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah at our Lord's gracious transfiguration, you reveal to us that all the law and the prophets are fulfilled in him. Send your blessing upon all pastors and servants of your church, that all their preaching and teaching would flow from the right understanding that all Holy Scripture testifies of Christ and all that he has done and continues to do for our eternal salvation. Be with those preparing for that office including Joseph Mitch and Jacob Frank. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, from whom every fatherhood in heaven, under heaven is named, support and bless every Christian home. That husbands and wives would be devoted to one another, and that parents would pass on the faith to their children by word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you alone establish all authority in earth. Bless those entrusted with this responsibility, both here and abroad, that they would serve with integrity and honor and for the well-being of all. Be with our elected and appointed officials and with our military men and women, including Mike Carl, Benjamin Halverson, Jason Halverson, Matt Handula, Eric Jazerski, John Jazerski, Eric Johnson, David Polzin, and Nick Polzin. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, graciously comfort and strengthen those who are sick, hospitalized, or in, enduring ongoing tr treatment. Especially Jane Anderson, Joanne Bolden, Bill Carey, Peggy Clapham, Drew Chambers, Chris Urban, Evelyn Frazier, Matthew Gibson, Bill Coivisto, Tim Jazerski, Pat Johnson, Teresa Coimula, Julie Lindgren, Eileen McKenzie, Diana Miller, Margaret Nielsen, Delilah Olson, Julie Reiner, Tom Robbins, Wyatt Robison, Ray Virginia Rogenwald, Dagmar Siebel, Jeff Sirota, 
Ted, Wendy, and Ashley Beard, Alice Childress, Craig Davis, Doug, Nancy Egbert, Mark Goller, Lou Johnson, Katie, Les Koitola, Lois, Greg and Marla Maddock, Deborah McKeever, Thomas Murphy, Carl Norman, Sarah Ojark, Noreen Pittsburgh, Katie Roy, Ramona Sanders, Jeff Stevenson, Adeline Silliman, Katie Ward, Dan Spielman, Jihan Udo, Wally Strock, and Elizabeth Zubar. That they would know your peace and receive healing and relief according to your gracious will. Be with those who are lonely, depressed, or mentally ill. Surround them with those who know your redeeming love and will mercifully care for them. Grant steadfastness to those near death, comfort to those who grieve, and the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to all, to all your children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, how lovely is the dwelling place of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who gives us sinners to eat and drink of his flesh and blood here at the holy altar. Grant to all who come to this feast today repentant and believing hearts, that in the Holy Eucharist they would receive forgiveness, life, and salvation, and be strengthened in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day the glorious manifestation of your Son's divinity on the Mount of Transfiguration. Teach us to listen to Jesus and ever fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end that we may die a blessed death, believing in your beloved Son, with whom you are well pleased. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Join in singing the Operatory Hymn 955, Let the Vineyard Be Fruitful.
begotten Son into our flesh, bear our sin, and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. We rise and join in singing the post communion canticle. Thank the Lord. Thank you. 